One of the wildest days in the history of the tournament continues on here in Greensboro, North Carolina. The fourth of four games coming up. The Xavier Musketeers and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. South region action with the winner to play here Sunday against the Lehigh Mountain Hawks who pulled off the shocker of all shockers on this floor earlier, defeating Duke. Welcome back, friends. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg here. Uh, there's still a buzz in this building <laughs> oh, here. Big time. You're big a time. happy dad. Your son's team, Ohio, pulled off another upset tonight over Michigan. We got Xavier coming up here against Notre Dame. Take us through the Musketeers. Well, the Musketeers got off to a terrific start, Jim. They were unbeaten until the brawl in that matchup with Cincinnati sent them just a game above 500. But this has been a program of excellence for a long time. Seven straight 21 seasons and in the NCAA tournament for the 11th time in the last 12 seasons. Taking on a Notre Dame team that really outperformed based on what people were expecting coming into this season. Without question, and Mike Bray has done it multiple times in his tenure at Notre Dame. Picked to finish ninth in the Big East, ended up finishing third. Gave Syracuse its first loss of this college basketball season. And in Jack Cooley, they have the Big East most improved player. Should be a good matchup here, too. Xavier and Notre Dame coming up next on CBS. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by AT&T. Infinity. And by E-Trade. There's a Xavier head coach, Chris Mack, three years, three times to the NCAA tournament. And his Musketeer lineup, Holloway, Lyons, Wells, Walker, and Freeze, the seven-footer from Massillon, Ohio. Meanwhile, for the Fighting Irish, Grant Atkins, Connaughton, Martin, and Cooley is Clark Zim, most improved player in the Big East this past season for head coach Mike Bray in his 12th year, the eighth time. Coach Bray taking Notre Dame to the NCAA tournament. Former head coach at Delaware before that took Delaware to a couple of tournaments. And before that was the loyal first lieutenant to coach Mike Krzyzewski. And many thought, you know, filling out brackets. Maybe we'll see uh, uh, Mike Bray, Mike Krzyzewski match up on Sunday, but that's not possible now after Lehigh's victory here earlier tonight. Xavier Notre Dame, give me a little bit of the matchup here. What to look for, Clark? Well, in the backcourt, you've got a pair of outstanding guards both on both teams. I mean, Jaron Grant, Eric Atkins for Notre Dame are younger, not the seniors that Mark Lyons and Two Holloway are, but talented nonetheless. That'll be the matchup that I've locked into. Kenny Freeze in the middle is a handful. He and Jack Cooley should thump and bump quite a bit. But it'll be determined, I think, in the backcourt. The experience of Holloway and Lyons against the youthful, precocious games of Atkins and Grant. Notre Dame, the better seed, the seventh seed, gets to wear the home uniforms. Michael Stewart, Gregory Nixon, Lamont Simpson officiating. Cooley and Freeze for the tap, controlled by the Fighting Irish. And it's Atkins bringing it up. Sophomore from Columbia, Maryland. This team to finish third in the Big East. Grant, that shot. Heavily influenced. Good defense there by the Musketeers to come out with it. Into the hands of their star player, Two Holloway. First team all. Atlantic 10. He's been on a bit of a rip of late. 21 points a game in his last four. Kenny Freeze has been pretty good the last segment of the season as well. 15 points a game in his last seven. Actually, double digits in five of the last seven. In those games where he scored double digits, he averaged 15 points a game. Nine rebounds a game over that stretch. So playing at a high level in this his senior season. Give the assist to Lions. Play set up that first time down the floor. Connaughton with a three, and that's sure. But he'll chase it down, stamp it outside to Martin for a three, and coming up with it is Lions. Look at this, Holloway. Long three from way out. 
out there. First five of the game to Xavier. He is a streaky three-point shooter, 34% on the year, Jim, but that was a rhythm shot in transition. What he really does well is get to the foul line. And you see Grant trying to go off the dribble and slid the pivot foot. So a poor start here for Notre Dame. Well, Mike Bray told us yesterday, hey, our team goes as the young guards go, and for the most part, they play older than they are. We'll find out if they can do it again against a really good team with a pair of experienced, well-seasoned guards in Lions and Holloway. Here's Lions. He's past Cooley, tries to dish, but Connaughton is there. First turnover committed by Xavier. Just a couple minutes into the game, that's all. That pass hits the rim, taken off with it as Lions. Gets it up, and that basket by Wells. Wow, that young fella trampoline, didn't he? I thought he was going to punch it. Instead, he laid it up above the square, Jim. Notre Dame needs to settle down here. They've been a little antsy. Short on shots, Aaron on passes, a turnover on a travel. Gonna idle down and get a good possession here. Jonathan got hit in the nose. Shaken up for a moment. Able to hang in there. Four seconds. Shot clock. Martin shakes free. Ball kicked out by Notre Dame. Back to Xavier. So Notre Dame still looking for his first points. Three minutes into it. Yeah, just joined the start here for the Fighting Irish. And here you see Wells going up. Swooping in with the finger roll. That was a swoop. That was a swoop. That was a condor-like swoop. <laughs> Inside, freeze. Oh, he missed the little finger roll. Overplayed it. Notre Dame, five straight empty trips. See what they do with this one. Down the ground. Set up for a three. And Notre Dame able to do it just like a diagram. It. Reese picks it up, snaps it back outside to Walker, and a reset. One thing about the Notre Dame guards, they do have a bit of a size advantage. Although Atkins, yeah, Atkins is a couple inches taller than Lions, and certainly Grant taller than both. Xavier guards. There's Freeze, short with the putback, Martin. So you might expect to see Notre Dame put those guards down in the low post. That's how they got their first basket. Got its first basket, rather. And Martin's got a three. Two straight from behind the arc by Notre Dame. Good basketball. When you can probe inside with the pass, the dribble penetration is fine, but a lot of times when you pass it inside and get it out quickly, you can set up that three-point shot. Both teams man-to-man -man defensively. Holloway, fade away, back to the rim, and tapped out to Atkins. Nice. Connaughton, way too long with that one, up ahead the Lions. Good extra pass, just a sh shot that was too strong by Notre Dame there. Foul on Atkins, our first break. Xavier scores the first seven, the next six to Notre Dame. Good action here by Notre Dame on one of its two three-pointers. I'm a circle Grant in the post. Martin going to cut here and occupy defenders. Atkins going to relocate behind the three-point line. Pass is going to come right out there for the three-point shot. Good action here. Post up, exchange, wide open three, splash. Xavier to inbound. The 7-6 lead. Five minutes in. 
beginning of the day we were saying hey no sweet 16 seed is lost <laughs> and the wildest day I think maybe ever oh, it's has up broken out I tell you what the only thing that could have topped what Lehigh did tonight here is a 16 beating a one right you, you got to rank it up there as the best 15 over a two is what your point was exactly. the game right with it being Duke on but the other thing is they won the game yep. this was not a fluke from the very start you mentioned it Jim were they able to handle the moment they didn't seem to shy away from it and that was from the start throughout the 40 minute contest Des Wells is going to the line coming up AT&T at the half we'll get you caught up and all the latest tournament news trying to get your mind around this scores and highlights coming up AT&T at the half so of course only the sixth time 15 over a two never on the same day much less the same year we get two that are separated by about what three hours then you also had a, a 13 over a four and your son was on the winning end of that one Ohio over Michigan so. yeah yeah I'm full Jim that's um, beyond description there it's madness <laughs> it really it broke out today I was thinking well, where is it we're going to see it. <laughs> well, you're right in the middle of it. What do you mean we're going to see it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice post up that time. Oh, big time. Cooley able to fight through the double team and draw the foul. Oh, he did his work early, Jim. He did the ceiling of his defender. See, he's holding him off. And then that's a tough catch in traffic, but never put it down. Caught it, concentrated, and anticipated the contact and played through it. Now on Walker, and that's a three-point play for the junior from Glenview, Illinois. Holloway dishes to Walker, and he's fouled going up. Jim Cooley's been in double digits in eight of the last ten as Walker's going to get a chance to shoot free throws here. Walker really just a... Value utility type guy. Does a little bit of everything. Six rebounds a game. He's a pretty good passer for a big guy. That foul was on Martin, his first. Only a 52% free throw shooter, though. Walker, a Vanderbilt transfer. Graduate student, actually. Gets to play only one year. Here for the Musketeers. That is undergraduate degree already. From Vanderbilt, good for him. Cooley, that pass was maybe out of reach, but he got fouled from behind by Travis Taylor, his first. Jeff Robinson entering the game, and Kenny Freeze re-entering. There's Robinson, a junior from Indianapolis. Grant coming in on the inbounds pass. And it's Robinson throwing it down. <laughs> Fortunate bounce there. It's Freeze able to go up and throw it down. He surprised me with that one, Jim. I didn't expect him to punch it like no, that. I didn't either. Especially with a couple of players draped all over him. Look at double team that time. And Cooley nowhere to go. Stepped out of bounds. This is what you're talking about. Yeah, well, that was Martin, who really couldn't bother him, but he was in the way. And then Cooley was out of the play from behind. Lions lost it. Right place, right time for Freeze. And look at him go up and actually got bumped a little bit. After all of that, Holloway comes away with it. Nice. Beautiful pass, and Freeze has another dunk. Six points for Freeze. All set up by two Holloway. Atkins left open. That's wrong. Snap ahead, Holloway. Atkins commits the foul. Holloway with another three point opportunity. Two Holloway. Putting together a little run of his own. He assisted on the last hoop and excellent concentration here as he was bumped underneath. Timeout, Notre Dame. All right, 
thank you, Ernie. The winner of that one will be taking on Ohio University come Sunday. And Fighting Irish fans are here. And St. Patrick's Day is, uh, well, we're about, closing in on closing it. Closing in, about 86 minutes to go. Now, due to the late finish of the first game, this one's going to tip to tip till about 10-15. So this game actually will be spilling over into St. Patrick's Day. If you're Xavier, your coach Mac, you might you, you might want to try to build up as big a lead as you can before anything gets crazy after midnight. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was wondering okay. where you were going with this. Spilling over into St. Patrick's Day. They're on an eight nothing run right now, Xavier. And two Holloway and Kenny Freeze have been the primary catalyst. Notre Dame really looking to try to get it inside. They need a couple of these to go down, and Scott Martin very capable from back there. Yeah, he's made two already, Clark. Boilermaker. He's battled knee injuries and hopes to apply for a sixth year. Let's get another year of eligibility. So he's a senior, but hopeful there's another year of basketball. We'll find out in a couple of weeks, they think. That pass almost got away. Mike Gray telling us yesterday he's been a real rock during going during times of kind of going when the, the, the Irish were struggling early in the season. Found the found the groove and Scott Martin, a real leader for this young team. Atkins. That pass. Martin did save it. He's over the table. And he took out Jack Nolan. The radio voice for the Fighting Irish. Nolan is still down. Yeah, he's, he's going to be okay. Looks like he's getting back to the microphone there. There's Lions with a three. Robinson tried to follow up with a dunk. And it's going to Notre Dame. More madness for you right here. Xavier with a decisive early advantage. Points in the paint. 10 to 2 lead. Check out some of the fast break action too. Pull up three by two Holloway early in the game and then Mark Lyons pushing it off nicely to Dez Wells. And here's Holloway. He made this a three point play. So Notre Dame hanging around despite being blanked in fast break points because they've made three triples. Shifty. He sure is. Second on this team in scoring and assist. But he gets called for the charge on this occasion. You can watch every 2012 March Madness game live on your computer, iPad, iPhone, or select Android phones with NCAA March Madness Live. Visit NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information. All the way applying that pressure. Dan's been down seven on a couple of occasions. Here's Knight on the floor. Tom Knight, a junior from Dixfield, Maine. Getting it down low with six seconds. Bouncing it. Oh, that's a nice work there by the big man just coming in. Turnover. Grant on an errand pass. Able to pilfer it and lay it up. So a quick turnaround and we're even again. How about that? Three point specialist turned for Xavier Redford. Going the other way. They're going to say two Holloway jumped in. 
to a defender in legal guarding position and created that contact. Let's take a look. It's Tom Knight, and you're allowed to go up and be vertical defensively. Here's another angle from up top. Yeah, I like that call. That's the right call. People Tom think Knight was there. Yeah, people think you have to have your feet planted. No, that's right, Jim. Well, you explained point. it well. You can go vertical. If you wall up and don't come down over the top of the offensive player, you're entitled to that space as much as he is. Martin. Last seven points to Notre Dame. Good. Look at that pass snapped in there, and Walker snatched it and fouled in the shot. Holloway averages five assists a game, and this is one reason why. Sees the floor and put it there on time, on target. Had to increase the speed, the velocity of that one. And a lot of wrist strength there, Jim, to snap at that distance. Walker will have one more. That foul was on Martin, he's got two now, so a little concern here for the Irish with 9.34 to go in the first half. But Martin stays on the floor. Notre Dame a seven seed, even though it finished third in the Big East regular season. Some thought maybe they deserve a little higher respect. 22 and 11 overall. You talk about being a seven C. Mike Gray plays basically seven guys. Good luck by Grant. Grant feeds it inside tonight. Good execution there, Jim. When you have the floor spread, that lane is open. And Grant at his size, he's got good size for a point guard. He's about six four. See right over most guys that will defend him in the backcourt. Holloway. Tough. He can make tough shots, though. Yeah, yeah, it was tough because he had a couple of bigger players. He had to adjust. He's got eight points. Puts the Musketeers back up by one. Dragovich on the floor for the second time for Notre Dame, number 12. Dragovich. And over to Martin. And Martin hits the jumper. Boy, that's pretty basketball there. Not only do they space the floor, but then they cut effectively and in a timely fashion. Martin came right to the middle of that foul line area after the ball had been swung opposite him. And that's a tough cover for the defense. What a freeze. And he almost had a three-point opportunity. Foul is on night. Freeze will be at the line when we return. Notre Dame has the one point lead. Coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament is sponsored by Lowe's. The UPS Store. And by Miller Lite. Two 15 seeds winning on the same day. Missouri and Duke are both eliminated. Shocking, just absolutely still hard to get your mind around it. As we resume play here in Greensboro. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, Tracy Wolfson here. And Lehigh's team coming out and Absolutely still taking bows, and they will be for the rest of their lives. Let's be honest, that'll yeah, be the no team question. that will be celebrated for years to come. And it'll get sweeter as time goes on. This will be limited, though, I would think, to some degree. At some point, you'll have to turn off the celebration valve and get ready yeah. for Sunday afternoon or whenever the game will be scheduled for action. Robinson back on the floor. Yeah, they got to turn around and play the winner of this one on Sunday. But I like the fact they're here basking in it with their families and friends for a short time anyway. And then they'll lock in based on the comments we heard from 
Ray Reed, they won't have a problem separating the celebration from the time to get back to work. It's Grant wiggling out of it to Dragovich. And the ball bounces out to Martin in a reset for Notre Dame. Tonight, over Robinson Knight, giving him some big minutes mm -hmm. off the bench. He sure is, Jim. He's doing a nice job, though, the Notre Dame fighting Irish of being patient. After kind of a skittish start, they've settled in nicely, executing better in the half court. And Grant, a big part of that zone defense now, 2-3. Got to get to him. Look at Lions. You've got to get to him. You can't leave him free at that three-point line. He's a 40% three-point shooter. He's got a nice stroke. You can see it right there, the rotation on that ball. Mm -hmm. From our angle, you could tell it was good all the way. We've had eight lead changes already in this game. Six minutes to go first half. Need the other half of that equation. The lead changes, where, where, what's our window at this point? Ah, our window, well, Xavier's had his lead as big as seven. And Notre Dame's biggest lead so far has been one. So that's what we call an eight-point window, Clark. <laughs> There's Chris Mack. <laughs> He's 100 games uh, into his Xavier reign. And uh, so tied to the late Skip Prosser. So respected, still talked about in the coaching fraternity around college basketball. And he was an assistant and was Chris Mack for Coach Prosser. Ed Xavier followed him on the Wake Forest. Came back, though, to join Sean Miller's staff. Because he's a Xavier man, after all, is Chris Mack. Mm -hmm. Said Chris Skip Prosser brought him into the coaching games. He did. Yeah. They was a head of basketball operations. They were first when he broke into the ranks. So front end of the one and one is off the mark there for Wells. A second foul, by the way, picked up at that end by Knight. Notre Dame over the limit. The seven fouls. Xavier has only committed four to this point. Snappy passing. Dragovich, the last minute. That's it to Cooley, and he'll go to the line with a chance to put Notre Dame up by one. Boy, how about Jack Cooley? He's made two tough catches inside, and then without putting the ball on the floor, has been able to go up through contact and finish. Freeze whistled for that one, his first. And here is the junior, Cooley. Tied at 24. Boxing out Walker. This young man right here, his family has quite a history in the game, including in the NCAA tournament. Talking about Jalen Grant, his dad Harvey. Go back to his days at Oklahoma. His father played in a championship game in 1988. That Kansas Danny Manning over Oklahoma final. There's Connaughton with a three, and he. Rattles it home for Notre Dame's largest lead at three. I'll tell you what, it's been really impressive, the execution of Notre Dame, Jim, over the last, I want to say probably the last eight minutes or so. Got pretty good shots every trip down. Deep one from Lyons. A little quick, and the defense hadn't moved, so the board is covered. Grant's had a nice floor game. He's really settled down after that first media timeout. They're not really doing a lot to pressure the ball or just rip in the rhythm here. Julie comes out to set a pick. 
Bogdanovich gives it back to Grant. Bounce pass in Cooley. And Cooley, when he's inside. <laughs> he's walking up. Yeah, he's, he's making it happen in there, isn't he? He's not going to let anybody take it away from him. He's got seven points. Three of three from the field. And a timeout called by Coach Mack of Xavier. Musketeers have squandered seven-point leads on a couple of occasions. Now find themselves down five to the Fighting Irish. Seven-nothing run. Last couple of minutes here by Notre Dame. Coach Mike Bray with a six-straight 20-win season. He's uh, done something that was only done by one other Notre Dame coach, Digger Phelps. How about, CBS colleague. Yeah. How about Notre Dame and its ability to beat teams ranked number one? Did that again this year with a win against Syracuse in South Bend. Davis has come in for zero for he, Xavier. Excuse me, Jim, but when he comes in, he's typically coming in to put pressure on the opposing team's guards. He, oh, nice tip in by Walker. Wow, that ends a three-minute scoreless stretch. Now let's see what D. Davis does. He comes in to heat up the ball, they say. That means he wants to pressure that ball handle. And Grant has been able to have his way in terms of running the offense. And there you see D. Davis right away denying the pass back to Grant. He's up into him, being active with his hands. Martin with the fake. Right back to him, and short on the little jumper. Three-point shot, yes! Created by Mark Lyons, though. He got that penetration along the baseline with some nifty ball handling. Got his team made a wide-open three, and we're tied again. That was Des Wells, who played high school basketball here in the state of North Carolina, won a couple of state championships at Word of God Christian Academy. Sounds like a place where John Wall hung out. That day they were teammates. Yeah. They actually had a... Couple of years together. Five on the shot clock. Dragovich to Cooley, cutting down the lane, and that's well played out by the Fighting Irish. Nine for Cooley. Well, I'll tell you what, Notre Dame has run its stuff really well. And they've got quality shots just about every possession. Over the last 10 minutes or so, Jim. Well, early, they surrendered the first seven of the game. And then settled down and ran their precision attack. Freeze tries the jumper. And that ball grabbed with two hands by Cooley with a minute 10 to go in the first half. Fighting Irish, you talk about their execution here of late. They've hit 10 of their last 14 shots. Mm -hmm. well, they've been very efficient. They've done it without Eric Atkins on the floor. Martin, the last minute. The drag of it. He puts it up and in. Big time catch of that pass. Seconds to go and a half. Notre Dame leads it by four. Other thing that helps your execution, Jim, is big guys that can catch tough passes on occasion and finish inside. I mean, every time Notre Dame's had a chance inside, they haven't missed it. Got about a two and a half second differential. Davis wide open his freeze for the dunk. Notre Dame should get a good shot here. Grant looked up, saw he had time to work with it. Steps back, takes the three, and back of the rim. So another good one here in Greensboro. Notre Dame leads it. At 
33-31. Seven different Notre Dame players have scored in this game. Let's go over to Tracy. Thanks a lot, Coach. It seems like you found your offense there down the stretch. What were you doing that was working well? Well, we slowed down a little bit and used some clock. We got a little bit of foul trouble. Uh, but we did a good job executing at the end of a shot clock, and we played that way a lot this year. You said you were concerned about their guards. How do you feel you've done against them so far? Once we limited the possessions by slowing down a lot better. The game was too fast early. we got to slow it down in the second half as well. Thanks a lot. Thank Jim? You. Thank you, Tracy. 33-31 Notre Dame, and we'll be back to Greensboro as we continue on the road to the Final Four on CBS in a moment. This telecast is copyrighted by the NCAA for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any picture, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NCAA's consent is prohibited. The Fighting Irish return to the floor, getting ready for the second half with that 33-31 lead. And Clark Kellogg, Jack Cooley leading the way with nine points. Doing a heck of a job catching everything and finishing to the tune of having not missed one shot attempt. And we'll show you that. How about that, folks? Four of them right there. He's converting them all. The winner to take on Lehigh here on Sunday. Here come the Musketeers in the second half coming up on CBS. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is sponsored by Chevrolet. Taco Bell. CDW. And by Oreo. Notre Dame shot over 50% in that first half and leads by a bucket. What are you looking for in the second half, Clark? Well, I look for Notre Dame to try to be disrupted by Xavier defensively. That's what I would expect Xavier to do, more pressure on the ball. All right, so Xavier will be inbounding at midcourt here in just a moment. Let's take a look at the stats presented by LG. Freeze with 10 points and Holloway with eight. Wells with another six points and four rebounds. There was not a single turnover committed by either side the final 10 minutes of that first half. Not a surprise on the Notre Dame side either because they're third in the nation, fewest turnovers all season long. Whipping it inside, Lions finding Holloway, who was drifting free. No one picked him up. He got a back screen there and no communication. You're right, Jim. And a bullet pass from Lions. Hey, what? You look at these teams. Both of them have done a pretty good job executing. Which team is going to be able to step it up defensively and shake up some of this offensive rhythm we've seen? Right back to Cooley. He still has a miss from the field. And we got a Xavier player taking a nasty spill right there. It was Wells. And on top of it, he gets called for the foul. So yeah, the basket took, counts. Yeah, he took a shot to the face, maybe the throat. Let's take a look here. Pick and roll. That's Cooley. Yeah, he got a shot. Looked like that left elbow of Cooley's inadvertently caught Wells in the face. Tough kid. He's going to stay out there. And Cooley remains perfect on free throw. Well, both teams content, Jim, to walk it up. You heard Mike Gray at halftime talk about slowing it down, and that's when he thought his team was most effective. So expect the same type of pace here in the second half. Martin sweeps. For the Irish. Atkins was limited to just nine minutes because he had the two fouls. Scott Martin picked up his second foul fairly early, but Mike Gray elected to leave him in, and he played the whole first half. And he hung in there in the last nine and a half minutes without picking up a third. And Grant also played the full 20 minutes. We said in the first half, it's a seven-man rotation for Mike Gray. That's Connaughton. 
He's going to double up as a baseball pitcher for Notre Dame as soon as the basketball season ends. He'll be a relief pitcher for that baseball team. Wells from the corner. That one looked like it was going to drop. It rattles out. Point lead for Notre Dame. Trailed on two occasions in that first half by seven. And now Atkins. It's Wells underneath. Up ahead, Walker. Kenny Freeze. And he's still down. A bad Connaughton. Reversal, yes. Now Notre Dame has its largest lead. It's going up by seven. The turnover committed by Holloway, the first by either team in 13 minutes of game clock. Pretty content, Jim, not to get out and extend themselves defensively, trying to play solid defense late in the shot clock. Not a lot of ball pressure in the second turnover committed now. This is a Xavier team that started out hot, won its first eight games, and some of the victims in that eight game win streak to start the season. Georgia, Vanderbilt, Purdue. Yeah, they got, they got Vanderbilt on the road. Impressive win. And then had the unfortunate brawl in the matchup with Cincinnati and lost some of the air. Yeah, they really did. They went, they've gone 13 and 12 since then. Mm -hmm. It's Grant. Well defended by Holloway. Cooley. Cooley showing some fast hands. Holloway trying to dribble that ball out of there instead of securing it first. Look at Cooley fight in that low post area. Well, they're letting him go at it. Yeah, Jeff Robinson. Jeff Robinson, yeah. yeah. Good look at it from here, folks. Grant puts up the shot short. Off the floor with it is Walker. Now Lyons, nifty move. Try to go back to Walker, it wasn't there. Atkins doesn't have the angle, but forces the foul and was shooting. He'll get his free throw attempts on the other side of the break. Hot start to the second half for Notre Dame with the likes of Pat Connaughton hitting from the outside to put him up by seven. Let's go to Tracy Wolfson with the Power 8 sideline report. Thanks a lot, Jim. Xavier's star guard, Two Holloway, was planning on entering the NBA draft after last year, but that was before the NCAA double tournament and their first round loss to Marquette. He went one for nine, just five points. He said that loss haunted him for two to three weeks after that. It still haunts him to this day. He said he is out here today trying to finish strong and put the past behind him, guys. All right, Tracy, here's Atkins at the line. By the way, Tracy, I'm a little early here, about 30 minutes early, but happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes, we know these Very things. Sweet. <laughs> and uh, same goes out to our stats man extraordinaire, Pat McGrath. So, so not only are we special St. Patty's Day. Yeah, we're on not this only crew. spilling into St. Patrick's Day, spilling into a couple of birthdays here. Yeah. Xavier without a field goal the last four minutes. A couple of turnovers as well in their last couple of possessions, Jim. Notre Dame is operating at peak efficiency offensively. Nice move by Des Wells. Well, they needed that. It's been a while. But I think they've got to ratchet it up defensively. I don't think they can continue to allow Notre Dame just to walk into the half court, milk the clock without any more defensive pressure. I mean, Notre Dame has made 15 
has made 17 baskets. They've got 15 assists. You gotta love that. Oh, you know, that's Mike a great Gray. ratio and only four turnovers. But the defense has been sitting back somehow, some way. And again, Cooley able to operate one-on-one -on -one in the low post. Cooley with 13 points. And still perfect from the field, six of six. Everything's right at the rim. And he's doing an excellent job catching and finishing, but not much resistance being offered. Maybe Xavier should think about zone or doing something differently at the defensive end. Notre Dame in too good a rhythm offensively. Robinson, he got hit in the face and no call. Yeah, well, you know, Notre Dame, you talk about few turnovers, paucity of turnovers. They also have not been whistled for a foul call on Notre Dame, approaching 12 minutes of action. Very clean, efficient, effective game by Mike Gray's club. And here they are again, going to take that clock down under 10. Eighteen minutes without a turnover, and Connaughton short with the shot. Wells wanting to run ahead to Holloway. Don't count. Oh, no, they're no. going to call it on the ground. Wow. Let's take another look at this. Wells to Holloway. Oh, that should be a bucket. That, to me, should be a bucket. And I think they did count. They conferred. The officials conferred. And change it. To Holloway. So Holloway has a chance for the three-point play. Foul was on Martin. There's his third. Mm -hmm. And there's that first Notre Dame foul. And again, a little more than 12 minutes. Almost 13, actually. With Robinson on the bench. He got poked in the eye. Yeah, he did on that shot attempt. I saw it. The officials did not. out. He's surprised all day long. The good shooters who have struggled at the free throw line in all four games. No explanation for it, Jim. I can't figure it out. Sometimes that just happens. A more defensive pressure applied by Mark Lyons there. Inside, Cooley's got another layup. Seven for seven and 15 points. Holloway, it's the space. That one looked like it was going to drop. It's off Notre Dame. Mike Gray imploring his team to box out and squeeze that camera. Full shot clock. Walker is fouled. And that goes against Cooley. Get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. Xavier's only six out of 11 from the line. Maybe six out of 12 now. Knight comes onto the floor, and Dragovic, they both provided some solid minutes in that first half. Connaughton and Cooley have a chance to sit and rest. Timeout called by the Musketeers. Chris Mack's team trails by seven. 12.44 to go. You know, Clark, this whole season, Xavier did not allow a team to shoot over 50%. In fact, only one team shot exactly 50. That was Dayton. But Notre Dame right now at 53% and leading this game. We're going to circle Cooley right here because he's going to roll. Not really going to scream, but roll. Ball's going to come back here, and then the defenders are all going to shift over here, allowing for an entry pass right into there. So let's take a look. Doesn't really set a screen, just slips. Ball goes to that left elbow, and because the defenders are all over shifting, Cooley finds himself alone at the rim again, and he has yet to miss in seven attempts.
big reason why they're 53 percent as a team. Knocked down the three. And the lead is now double digits for the first time on either side. Hey, Grant having some kind of game. I mean, he's not scoring a lot. That was his seventh assist. He may have been. I think it was his seventh. There is Lyons answering back. Another three on that side. imploring his team to step it up defensively. Mismatch now. Holloway trying to defend Cooley. That's a list. Knight inside. I'm sorry. Tough Knight was inside. Notre Dame missed him. Martin missing on the three. Holloway driving in and they call that a charge. Second on Holloway. Cooley seven out of seven from the field to lead the way. I tell you, I hope you can appreciate this, folks. It's an amazing number. 20 field goals, 18 of them coming on an assist. Yeah, you won't see that ratio very much no. at all, any level of basketball. 90%. Yep. A good ratio, Jim, usually is 60, 65 is really good. That puts you in the upper echelon of the teams. You're talking 90. That's way, way beyond a, a normal number. I'm still a little perplexed that this Xavier hasn't really tried to get after these Notre Dame guards, and that time a turnover. Holloway to Walker. Oh, that almost went down. He'll shoot two. That's the first turnover by Notre Dame in the last 21 minutes. Rackets busted? I think they are for just about all of you listening right now. <laughs> we start a new one, though, with round by round. For every correct pick, Infinity will make a donation to fight cancer up to $700,000. Sign up at cbssports.com slash infinity. Dragovich called for the foul as Connaughton comes in for him. And Walker gets another free throw attempt. He's three out of seven now. As a team, Xavier eight for 15. Yeah, I think there are a few brackets busted. What do you think? Oh, yeah. No question about it. The, the, the Missouri one, I mean, everywhere I look, everyone was taking Missouri out of the West, and Michigan State wasn't getting the props. That ruffled your feathers a little Did, bit, huh? We saw Michigan State last week. Right. You know, Tom Izzo just has this knack for taking teams to the promised land. I feel you. I'm not disagreeing with you, partner. Michigan State with an 89-67 win tonight. That's Pulled a, away from LIU. Mm -hmm. It's only a five-point game at halftime there, Jim. The foul on Walker, his second. There's a little more pressure that time trying to keep the ball out of the hands of Atkins, but this is the guy who's been the maestro for Notre Dame, Darren Grant. There's a three-point shot long by Atkins, pulled down by Walker. We move inside at 10 minutes to go. This is where two Holloway can take over. Good look for Robinson. Walker gets it back, comes out with it. Holloway, open three. Yes, sir. That's seven unanswered now for Xavier.
Cruz down there trying to fight with Cooley. The shot goes up. He's going to call a foul on him. Yeah, Mark Lyons was really battling in there, giving up a lot of height and weight and did too much holding it. He doesn't want to come out. He says, let me, hold on. I'll stay out here. I've got three. A 7-10 matchup. Notre Dame's largest lead, 10. Xavier's largest lead, 7. Cooley gets off the floor. Ready to rework it inside. He's got Walker. I think he's already sh yeah. shaken up. He said he did something there. I'm not sure what. Trying to walk it off, Jim. Hamilton, no, oh, he got pinned. Last minute. Foul on the shot. Cooley is dazed. He had his back turned when Connaughton tried to throw it to him. Might have been a little knee-to-knee -knee contact. There it is right there. Yeah, right there across the knee and the shin, Jim. He is still having a hard time getting to that bench. The third round begins tomorrow at noon Eastern on CBS with Kansas State and Syracuse. 5 p.m. TNT has the NCAA Infinity tip-off show. Eight games across CBS, TNT, and TBS over 12 hours. So Cooley kind of scratch as well. Walker can trim this to one. Well, Notre Dame starting to wobble a little bit, Jim. Xavier's picked up the defensive pressure just to scope. And Notre Dame still trying to massage this shot clock. When you're executing well and knocking down shots, it's a great way to play, but when things are tight, I think you've got to try to go a tad earlier in the shot clock. There's Grant. Long shot. Yes! Notre Dame's first points in four minutes. Jaron Grant. Holloway. Not able to match at that time. Good job by Robinson. Picking it off the floor and then going to the other side to jam it home. A grown man's offensive rebound and throw down there, Jim. Yep, first bench points of the game for the Musketeers. And they rely heavily on two Holloway and Mark Lyons. Everybody else just kind of pinches in. Desmond Wells averages double digits. And after that, it's spread out. Shot. It's a shot clock violation. You know, Martin's convinced that ball actually nicked the right side of the rim, and he's making an appeal here. But we've got the under eight timeout and another tight one in Greensboro. Ernie Johnson in New York. Here's what's going on on TNT. The South Florida Bulls continue to lead Temple. That's Anthony Collins with the high arching shot. The freshman has 11, and they continue to lead as we take you back to Greensboro, Jim. All right, Ernie, South Florida coming out of Dayton on Wednesday. It's win over California. And meanwhile, you got Temple from the Atlantic 10 trailing in that one. You got... Xavier from the A-10 down by two here. St. Bonaventure has already lost, but St. Louis has advanced. So they had four teams in. Cooley's back on the floor for Notre Dame. That ties it. Holloway. This is where he'll step on the gas pedal now, Jim. Q Holloway, 21 points a game in his last four. He's a big shot maker and taker. Has the ball in his hands. He and Mark Lyons will now look to really be assertive. And Notre Dame, after going a good portion of this 
second half without turning it over. They've had three turnovers in the last few possessions. Notre Dame crashes the boards this time. And it's Cooley. Called by Mike Ray. 627. A tie game here in Greensboro. The arrow belongs to Notre Dame. Irish coming out of a timeout. And they've been getting an assist almost with every basket. Sure have, and Cody's been finishing. The tune of not having to miss. The execution was really outstanding for the for, for most of this game, Jim, until here recently. There you see assist between the teams. Now Notre Dame's got to find a way to get that ball inside the Cooley. And defend is six seconds on the shot clock now. Oh, Put back goes for Martin. That's their Second field goal in the last seven minutes. We got another player down. It's Walker. Here foul on number 21, Jeff Robinson. That's his first personal 16 foul. Interesting. Wells was the first teammate over there, as you see. Yeah, he gets tangled up. Actually, man, got hit by Jeff. Did Jeff Robinson get him in the own face? Teammate. Let's see. Inadvertent hand. Oh yeah, oh, there yeah. it is right there. Yeah, he was hit yeah. by Robinson. Yeah, Robinson. At first, Wells was over there by his side and signaled over to the bench. No, don't come out. We're gonna be okay. But no, oh, he's groggy. He is. Yeah. He sent freeze over. To the scores table to check in. Again, caught up in all of that. There was the shot by Martin. Notre Dame's been on a cold spell, squandering a 10 point lead. The Martin shot gives him the lead back. He's got a chance for the three point play. Andre Walker trying to walk it off and shake it off. The basket, the first points of the second half for Martin. He faced Xavier back in the 2008 tournament with Martin when he was playing at Purdue. He scored six points, had six rebounds, and a loss to the Musketeers. So he saw him early in his career at a different school. I think that year, the... what did Xavier end up that year? Uh, the the Xavier went on that year to the regional final. They went to the Elite Eight. Yeah, the Elite Eight for the second time as Holloway hits the shot. That's the lead to one. Xavier has twice been one game from a Final Four. 2004, losing to Duke in a regional final, and then getting knocked out by UCLA that year in 08. Mm -hmm. Which here's Notre Dame. And went to the 78 Final Four. Behind Kelly Tribuca, guys like Lambeer. And the Woolridge part of that team as well. Woolridge, Hanslick, Williams. Here's Grant. Hits a three. Two big ones for Grant. He hadn't looked to shoot it much. He was setting everybody else up most of the game. But boy, has he come up big here late. That nine in the second half. That shot almost goes. Well, we talked about the guards, Jim, at the top of the telecast. Atkins and Grant for Notre Dame and Holloway and Mark Lyons for Xavier. And it very well could come down to that now in this tight game, possession by possession. Those guys will have the ball in their hands most of the time. The foul is on Cooley. Cooley's second. Two at the line. And there's Walker. 24 on the floor for the Irish. Getting checked to see if there's any kind of concussion sim symptoms. It appeared as though he mouthed that he was saying two things. And I 
I couldn't quite, but it, yeah, he's, he's certainly um, not quite all there right now. Timeout called by Xavier. Down two. 57, 55, Notre Dame. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, and Tracy Wolfson here. Just 5.03 to go. Our third game here today at Greensboro Coliseum coming down to the last minute. Creighton over Alabama. Lehigh shocking Duke. And we'll see if this comes down to the last minute, but certainly has the signs of that. North Carolina won by 19 also today. Defeating Vermont. This is right up there with one of your most compelling second round days, isn't it? I, I think it might be the best. Yeah. That's after two stellar games in Dayton on Tuesday, and there's a foul down low, and it's called against Xavier's backup guard, D. Davis. It'll yeah, be a one and one. Yeah, he was in there hand fighting or, or body fighting. Let's see. Yeah, he's trying to wrestle with Cooley because of the switch. See, they switched on the screen, and Davis down there trying to wrestle with Cooley and giving up an awful lot of size and weight. There it is. Davis took the worst of it, but I think he got up under Cooley. And that's why he got whistled for the foul. It's a short stint for Davis. And Cooley will be shooting one and one. Seventh team foul on Xavier. Cooley is one out of three tonight from the line. Notre Dame team that finished third in the regular season in the Big East, 13 and 5. Syracuse regular season champs. Marquette finished second. And then it was Notre Dame. It's after last year going 14 and 4. Back to back. Good, good seasons there. Turned in by Mike Ray and his staff. going to go against Notre Dame that time. Scott Martin guilty. That his fourth. It is four on Martin. All right now you can see Xavier playing through its top three scores. Holloway Lions and Des Wells. D. E. Davis about to check back in. Well, the execution now Jim I mean that's simplistic but what it comes down to. Neither team really looking to run in transition. Every possession is played in the half court. Zero. So Davis hops back onto the floor for a brief break. And here are the freshmen from Raleigh, North Carolina. Tremendous upside, they'll tell you, Xavier. And he hits them both. One point game. First lead since 24-22 with five and a half to go first first half. Boy, that's a foul on Jeff Robinson. Robinson whistled for that a one and one coming up for Notre Dame. 323 on the clock. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup impact performance. To Holloway. This gave Xavier his first lead since five and a half. It was on the clock in the first half. 23 points. One and one coming up 
for Jack Cooley. Made half of his free throws. Is that right, Jim? Is that what Cooley's done? Two for four? Got him for two for five. Two now. for five, okay. He just hit before hit the front end, but missed the back end of the one and one. And again, more struggles at the line. Yeah. reason for the playmaker to be to not be either two Holloway or Mark Lyons here. Doesn't mean he has to take the shot, but he should have the option to make the play. Holloway off on the three. Cooley was losing his balance was able to get it away without a travel. Notre Dame fans rising to their feet as we approach two and a half minutes to go. One point lead, Xavier. We're on the shot clock. Atkins puts it up and almost got it to spin in. Brings it back out for the fresh 35. So the Irish fortunate there did not get off a good shot but able to keep possession. Two minutes to go. There's Grant. Tapped up, no. Cool, yes! And Notre Dame leads again. That big fella just goes after the ball. Still perfect from the floor. Yeah, eight out of eight. and he's found Connaughton on the foul. Two free throws coming. Second on Connaughton. Wells, a 68% free throw shooter. Not close there. Three out of six tonight. This one to tie it with 1.34 to go. 60-60. The ninth tie of the night. Intent to take it down under 10 seconds on the clock. That's been the story all game long. Mike Gray early on identified the pace that he wanted this game played in, and his team has done an excellent job of executing late clock situations. Grant step back three, and Notre Dame gets the big shot from Jaron Grant. On the floor. Freeze, able to save it for the Musketeers, and a timeout called by the bench over there. Xavier. What a big shot. He's made a few of them here in the second half. Jaron Grant, Irish by three. Xavier down to one timeout. Notre Dame has two. Jim, you're down three. If you're Xavier, you don't need a three-point shot here. If you get a good look at it for one of your better three-point shooters, you take it. But you've got to be thinking high-quality shot and fairly quickly. 29 seconds left on the shot clock. You certainly don't want to use all of that. Work. Mark Lyons, junior from Schenectady, New York, cuts it down to one. About a six-second difference between game and shot clock. So you, oh, wow, what was that? That was Eric Atkins. Here is one of the best teams in college basketball at not committing turnovers. Boy, that had no chance. 
Wow. Timeout called by Notre Dame. Each team now down the one. 32 seconds to go. See us up here, Clark Kellogg. Ball belongs to Xavier. 32 seconds to go. Shot clock is turned off. Musketeers down by one. Down one, I don't think you obviously can't go just for the win. You've got to try to take it down. I think you look probably in that 10, 12 second area. Or you go right away and get the best shot available. Go fairly quick and try to take the lead and then put it on your defense. Lincoln off the screen and puts up the shot. Pass it in for the lead. What a shot by two Holloway. Notre Dame inside 20 seconds. They have one timeout. They're not going to take it. Grant over to Coddington. Now they do. It comes from the bench. 64-63. Xavier. What a shot. This, shot. this is an amazing shot here. It's a big-time player, though. Making a tough, tough Big shot. Back with 12.8 seconds to go. Notre Dame trails by one as we push past midnight and into St. Patrick's Day. We'll see what the Fighting Irish could come up with here. Trying to go for the win here. 12 seconds remaining. Well, Jim, you can't use all of this clock, obviously. Down one. I think you've got to try to drive it to the goal. Both teams over the limit. Grant has been terrific, knocking down big shots. Cooley has yet to miss. So I think you get those guys involved in whatever sets you have that can get the ball inside or create an opportunity for Grant to create. Xavier, on the other hand, has to be ready to defend without fouling. And then when the shot does go up, if it's missed, everybody's got a ball. Here's Grant. Takes the immediate shot. Off on the three. Pulled down by Wells, and he's fouled. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one at the other end. That's a pretty good look, Jim. I'm not too displeased with that shot. He's made a couple of big ones. Got a good look at it. Defenders have backed off. And the important thing is you did it early. The foul was on Martin, and that fouls him out. Well, he got as good a look as oh, you could no expect. No question about it. Two Holloway was going underneath the screen. But remember, it's a one and one at the other That's end. That's right. That's right. Now, Notre Dame is out of timeout, so and whatever worse, happens here off the free throws, mm -hmm. at worst, you got a chance for a three for the tie. You may have a That's chance to drive, so down, the, drive down the court and win. That's why it was so important to go early. Give yourself a chance for this scenario. We're going to double check the and time. The clock is rebound. The officials are looking at this. Time out. Actually, the foul there. So that's got that's pretty close to what's on the clock, don't you think? It is pretty close. I may add just a couple of tenths. I'm going to leave it as is, it appears. A one and one. They did add three tenths, Jim. There you go. Wells, it has not been easy for him at the line. The freshman, four out of seven. Coming back to his home state here. Young man out of Raleigh. One and one. His team leads by one. Big. Now, if he makes this, the question is, do you foul? 8.4, that's probably a tad too much to commit the foul. My, my theory is if it's five or less and you're plus three, you foul. Too much has to go wrong for you to lose in that situation. And again, Notre Dame with no timeouts. Here's the second one. It's off, and here we go. Eight seconds to go. Three to win it, two to tie it. Atkins tripped up, and there's a foul call. Fouled by Davis, and it's still in a one-and-one. One. Good job by Atkins just to try to split the defenders, and there you see the foul. Davis not able to cut him off. Good aggressive drive, though, by Atkins. Davis shaking up. Atkins will be at the line, as you said, Jim, one-and-one. One. He is a 72% free thrower. Eric Atkins. 
Atkins, sophomore from Columbia, Maryland. He was the backup last year to Ben Hansbrough. Here he goes, one and one, with 2.8 seconds. Got the first. Boy, that didn't look anything out of the ordinary to me. Boy, that's a tough one there. Guys leaning in, grabbing. I'm with you, Jim. It's after Atkins. Let's look at it. Dead eyed, the first shot, dead center. I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. They're saying it was. And it was Jaron Grant, not. Here he is right here. And that is the rule. That is the rule when you're outside of the three point, when you're outside of the three point arc in college basketball, you cannot run into that foul lane area before the ball is released. It happened yesterday it in sure the Syracuse did. And it was game. the right call. 2.8 seconds to go. I was locked in the Cooley and it was Grant. On a foul call on Connaughton. And they say it was intentional. Well, a tough way if this ends up being the being the free throws that seal it for Xavier, but that was the right call, folks. Free throws and possession. Yep. Grant moved early based on where he was. You can't run into that area before the ball is released. Wells will shoot the free throws off the intentional foul. He'll get two. Yeah, pulling the shirt. Sure, that's easy. Two tough calls, but two correct calls. Both in the last 2.8 seconds. And Xavier. Ball was stolen by Atkins. And he shot that one over the goal, over the backboard rather. Can't go from behind the backboard over. Xavier's going to come back from 10 down in the second half. They've done it quite a few times this year. It's going to be its sixth double-digit comeback win of the year. The largest being 19 down to beat Purdue early in the season. The game is over. Xavier moving on to the third round. here in Greensboro. The two and the seven both fall here. Mike Bray's Notre Dame team and his old mentor Mike Krzyzewski and the Blue Devils lose in the nighttime session. What a comeback by Chris Max Musketeers. The tournament continues now on TNT and True TV. Coverage on CBS begins tomorrow at noon Eastern. For Clark Kellogg and Tracy Wolfson, Jim Nance saying so long from Greensboro. We'll send it to our studios after these messages.